slide making. Uh, the number of presentations per day across the world, any idea? That is 30 million. 30 million people are making presentations every day. And how many of them are really bad? It is as much as 90%. And maybe mine will be one of them. So how to make people listen and make it memorable for the audience? How to make your presentation memorable? See, we have to aim at the even the last benches, not necessarily the first benches, not that the first benches are, are going to be interested in your talk unless you make it one. We can see here the first benches are also not very attentive, let alone the last benches. So what I'm going to speak in the next 10 minutes is how to make a slide that's going to attract the audience attention. So the first slide should be what you're going to speak on, the various headings under which you are going to present or uh, make the presentation like I am in this particular presentation I'm going to tell you about the fonts about the color of the fonts the background the pictures and videos how to incorporate them when to incorporate them the graphs the spellings and grammar how to conclude all these things I'm going to cover that's the first slide and first of all you have to remember that the purpose of a PowerPoint presentation is to use it as an aid to educate not as a crutch which you have to keep holding on to always. It is an aid with the help of text, with the help of clinical photographs, with the help of videos, both of which speak from themselves, with the help of animations, with the help of graphs, charts and tables, which make it comprehensive for the audience. Uh, the slide structure, look, this is actually a, a, a news reader who is reading out from a teleprompter. So we as ophthalmologists, as doctors, have to use the title as a cue and not go on reading like a newsreader. You're not a newsreader, you're, you're a professional. And PowerPoint enough uh, is not enough. Making a PPT is not enough. You have to work hard on making the PPT, but more and more effort has to go into rehearsing because when you finally present, just these slides will not help you. You have to re rehearse the slides, maybe one hour of talk will require at least 30 hours of, present, of preparation. This, for example, is a slide. I'm a vitreoretal surgeon, so I'll, most of my slides will have something like this. The timing of surgery is controversial. It may be necessary to leave it to the surgeon's judgment. The decision on immediate or delayed vitrectomy will depend on the risk and benefit of the patient. Everything is written down there. Why do you want somebody to read it out? You may as well put up the actual text from the textbook and put it there. The audience is not illiterate. They will read it. So why do you want uh, Guru Prasad or somebody to read it out? So this is not right. This is all that is required. The entire thing can be conveyed in four small phrases. Timing controversial, sur surgeon's judgment is required. It may be immediate or delayed depending on the risk and benefit to the patient. So these are the four things, points that are required to make the crowd, uh, the slide less crowded in order that the, the slide looks good. Show one point at a time. You have about four to five points in a, in a presentation, in a slide. Show one point at a time that will help the audience concentrate because otherwise they will read up the entire thing faster than you tell them and that will not serve the purpose. So help the audience to concentrate, keep the suspense. They will be always waiting to see what comes next and it will help keep the presentation focused. And most importantly, don't keep more than four or five points on a slide and don't keep a single slide for too long. That also is boring and monotonous. Now this, for example, is a teaching slide that is used by anatomists, anatomists and ophthalmologists and the professors in the teachers in the medical colleges and the DNB institutes. For example, this is a slide which has listed out the different layers of the retina. If you go on reading them and tell them, they will get bored. There's no need to actually tell them what is there in the textbook already. Instead of this, if you use a, a textless slide, the beauty of a textless slide is what this is showing. You can see that with the help of animations, with the help of pictures, it may be a class on anatomy or it may be a class of, on OCT. If you show it like this, can you see those lines at different layers coming up? You can actually tell them this is where it lies. These are the 10 layers and this is where 
the different layers lie. This is an example. I'm sure you all know. So that is the beauty of textless slides. The font size is very important. So we have in our conferences, many of our conferences, very small or very large fonts, and it is not visible from a long distance, from a distance of a big hall, for example, a hall of a size bigger than this. It will be difficult for people to read this. So use different font sizes. The main font should be 24. I mean, the font that is in the main text should be 24 point. The title should be 28, and this title, the main title, should be 36 point. And don't dabble with just Times New Roman or Arial or Tahoma, which are the usually seen uh, fonts we see in the, in the conferences. You can just pick up the beautiful fonts that are available on Google search. You can get all those beautiful fonts and put them into your text, which is going to be more attractive. And using capitals is not a good thing because it is, it is used to be used only when necessary because it is difficult to read capital compared to the small case. And don't use complicated font like this. And the size of the font, I was telling you, is designed for the guy at the back. And, and if it is unreadable for the guy at the back, then probably don't use that particular font. Uh, for this, I would like to use the 8H rule of legibility. If you can read a computer, a computer screen from 5 feet, say for example, if you have to, if a hall of 24 feet, then the font size should be at least read from a distance of 3 feet. The 8H rule is what we call it. And if you, this has to be read from at least uh, uh, 5 feet distance for a hall of 5 into 8, 40 feet. So if this is 40 feet, then your font has to be, be able to be read from a distance of 5 feet on your computer. That is the meaning of 8H rule. Do not go overboard with animation. Very distracting. Dr. Uh, MPS also showed the same thing. Definitely not this. Be consistent with the animation that you use. Use contrast, which is, you see, you're not testing the contrast sensitivity of the audience. You may be an ophthalmologist, but definitely when you make a presentation, it should be legible. And use color only to emphasize a point and that too occasionally. Use a black on a white background or a light background. You can use variables in color depending on what exactly you want to speak or highlight, like this. Using fonts with different colors like this can be very, very, you know, try, don't try to be too creative. It can be very distracting and very irritating to the eyes of the audience. Simple backgrounds, light backgrounds, consistent backgrounds, and definitely not backgrounds like this. Huh. This, for example, is a, is, is a point which I would like to emphasize. Sometimes we have too many pictures on the slide. We want to tell about each point with the help of a picture. The best thing to do would be to animate in such a way that you have each picture coming after, a, after you have told a particular point. And when to get that picture on the slide will be decided by a, a, a dot here. Can you see these two red dots and a red comma here? That will help you to prompt you as to when you have to press the enter button to get the picture coming there. For example, embolism is you have shown this. The, that particular slide, the picture disappears, then you have trauma with this picture going away and the next picture coming, then you have this encircling band coming and the, the peripapillary loop coming there, disappearing for the next picture to come in and that also finally disappearing. So with this you have not too much crowding and not too a busy slide, they call it nowadays. Don't make the slide too busy. So keep picture, one picture at a time on the same slide with the help of animations. Pictures you have to use liberally. For example, this is a FACO, you are talking about a FACO in a subluxated cataract. High risk of lens drop is there, needs experience via surgeon to salvage. If you use a picture like this, it will be helpful for you to not only uh, keep the attention of the audience, but also to convey the message. This I have used in a presentation on nucleus drop. Sound, please. Can I have the sound? So this is, please, sound. 
a, a movie clip like Dr. Uh, MPS also showed. And just keep looking at me. <laughs> Sir, that's great. You're starting to look like a pro. Keep going. That's it. Nice and easy. Hey, Al, we're going to be out of the jump soon. All right, a little more, sir. That's it. That's it. One, two. If you use such a picture or such a movie of a clipping in a talk on a, on a drop nucleus, probably you can uh, expect that the patients, that the audience, will be, at me. audience will be more attentive because they will be ex expect the same type of dramatic effect in your presentation as well. Scanning of photographs at proper resolution is very important. 25 dpi is enough if you don't want to expand, for example, like this. or if you want to really zoom it up, you have to use a 100 to 200 dpi if you're planning to zoom. So graphs are good, charts, tables like this are not very good because you don't know what you're talking about, what the uh, speaker is talking about. There's some, so many uh, CMA, BRV, OCRV, inflammation, avastin, AVT, and so many figures. But if the same thing is shown in the form of a, in a bar chart, it will be much more comprehensive for the audience to understand what you're talking about. So graphs are good. Use these bar charts. Spelling and grammar, very, very important. Proof your slides. No spelling mistakes. It, it, it carries some you know, uh, impression about you. The use of repeated words, uh, grammatical errors, all these things have to be looked at to prevent the grammar Nazi um, talking about you later. <coughs> Slight transition is something that is also important. For example, this kind of transition is not good. It is very distracting. It is irritating to the eyes. So also this. So let it be a simple transition. This is how it should be. And before I close, I would like to tell you that PowerPoint, Office PowerPoint by Microsoft is not the only option that we have for making a presentation. We have Prezi, we have Focus Sky, we have Autoon, we have Keynote, and complex they might be able to get. Here we are, complex they might be able to get. Here we are starting off, and I advance to Example, my general Focus topic Sky. here, history. I zoom in. As I go from point to point, I'm discussing uh, the information that uh, came from my research. And uh, here I can show you in a second, you can actually embed videos. Right. So we don't have just one option. We have several options in our armamentarium for a presentation. So conclusion, use an effective and strong closing. Your audience is likely to remember it. You remember the last words. Summarize the main points and suggest future revenues. This is a summary, a typical summary that we you know, usually make, for example, in a patient who has a CSR and treated with PDT. ROPI is giving a, uh, giving a lecture and some people came in at the last minute and said, what, what is the gist of your presentation? I said in one word, prematurity is equal to potential permanent lifetime of blindness. So that, you know, carries an impression. Take home message is very important for this audience. If people who, especially who come in late, walk in late in the middle of your presentation. So this is the take home message for this particular uh, present my presentation on slides. Keep it simple and crisp. Don't vomit text. Use engaging and effective visuals. Have a take home message slide also. And end your presentation with a simple question. Ask your audience, maybe a small CME if you can do it. And the last slide has to, for example, this is an example of a last slide that I gave in one of my presentations on, on how to avoid surprises after cataract surgery. So I said examine both anterior and posterior segments thoroughly. Avoid surprises that way. And this is how you can add prep to your presentation. I'm sorry. And this is the video that I showed them to make them understand what I meant by the content of the last slide.
So thank you very much.